Recently, someone asked me if I was glad I got into teaching, and that got me to thinking. Am I glad I got into teaching? If you're wondering, should I be a teacher, this video is for you. If we haven't met yet, my name is Melanie Howe, and I have been a teacher for more than 20 years. If you find this video helpful, I hope you will subscribe and click the like button. Now, if you're watching this video and you are a teacher, I'm gonna ask you for a favor. Could you leave a comment down below, some words of wisdom, some kind of things I wish I had known before I got into teaching advice? Because I figure YouTube's gonna be around for a while and a lot of people, even in years to come, could watch this video try while they're trying to decide if they should be a teacher. I mean, this is the information age and it shouldn't surprise us that, you know, people are, even searching YouTube for a little nugget of what they can find out about what teacher life is like. Okay, with all that being said, no one can really tell you if you should be a teacher, but I can give you some advice on how to help you figure it out. Um, one thing I would ask myself is not, oh, I love children. No, instead I would ask myself, do I really like human growth and development? Do I really like little puzzles? Because the truth of the matter is every child, and yes, I mean every child, not every class, every child you ever teach is like a little puzzle that has to be put together. You have to put these puzzles together in order to figure out the best way to teach them. And that's part of the fun of the job. I mean, I don't have crazy, mad, organized skills. <laughs> well, you can ask anybody I work with. Um, but I'm fairly organized, and that seems to be okay. But, you know, being able to stay organized is pretty important. And then you have to ask yourself, what is your chaos threshold? I compare my classroom to what it might be like to live in an ant bed everybody's busy, everybody's moving, everybody's communicating, everybody has a task, but it looks like chaos. And sometimes everybody moving, doing different things can feel like chaos. So you have to have a pretty decent threshold for how much chaos you can take. How flexible are you? <laughs> Not bendy. Yes, I mean flexible in terms of You've worked all weekend on your lesson plans and then something happens and you don't even get to half of it and you're just expected to roll with it. That's right. You're expected to roll with it and you got to roll with it probably, I don't know, every week. But that's part of the fun. No day is ever the same. You never know what kids are going to do or say. And by the way, they are hilarious. You will laugh so much in this job. You can't get so caught up in your lesson plan that you miss the teachable moment. That teachable moment is that special opportunity that comes along that gives you a chance not just to teach content, but a life lesson as well. Okay, here's, we gotta talk money because everybody thinks, oh, should I be a teacher? I know they don't make any money. Well, it's true, we don't make any money. So you gotta go ahead and decide you're gonna be okay with that. But here's, here's what you need to consider is the feeling that you get from making a difference enough to outweigh the lack of funds. So do you think you can happily chip away at a mountain every day and not get upset that you're not compensated so much for chipping away at the mountain? And you can't be one of those people that constantly steps back and looks at the whole mountain because you'll get burned out and overwhelmed fast. But if you realize the joy that comes with each chip, chip, <laughs> um, chipping away at that mountain, then that's where real teaching joy can come from. I mean, these, these kids, when you see the light bulb come on, when you get that really sincere smile that you've really helped in some way, um, it makes you feel like the most special person on planet Earth. It's just wonderful. But again, you have to decide it's enough to outweigh the compensation part. So what am I saying? You should be a teacher if 
you like human growth and development, you like looking at kids like puzzles and the psychology of figuring out what makes them tick and then figuring out the best way to teach them. You need a love of learning, not necessarily a love of bossing people around teaching, but a love of learning. Do you just love to learn new things? Because you are going to learn new things every day. Um, do you like research? Because you're going to be doing a lot of research. Kid comes in your room, there's a diagnosis, you've never heard of it, you got to research it, and you're now responsible for educating a child with this diagnosis. Or, you know, um, science is always advancing, so we're constantly changing what we consider best practices in the classroom. So, you know, you got to stay on your game or you're going to be a dinosaur teaching old methods. Okay, what else? Love of learning, love of puzzles, love of human growth and development, and does your love of making a difference outweigh the money problem? These are things you need to consider. I hope I've given you a lot to think about. Teaching has been great. I wouldn't, I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Again, if this video has been helpful, I hope you will click subscribe. And if you are a teacher watching, leave your words of wisdom down in the comments. Or if you have more questions and I can give a more detailed answer, you can um, email me or send me a message, whatever, leave a comment. I'm happy to talk about it. I love teaching and I would love to tell you all the benefits that come with being a teacher.